Uh, let's move our attention to the Canadian Premier League. And, you know, we have mentioned before, and this is also what's very exciting because part of this men's national team camp are two former CPLers and Dominic Zator, who you guys seem to believe could get into the lineup here, and Victor Latoury. Uh, but here's the thing, guys. Like, the Canadian Premier League is also helping other players um, stay in shape and get top minutes to allow themselves to be called up to their national team. So seven current CPLers have received national team call-ups in March. Uh, I'll begin, you know, with you, host of CAMPL Newsroom, Charlie. You know, what does this also just tell you about the CPL and, and being able to allow players to continue playing and, and catch the eye of their national teams? Yeah, well, it's certainly positive news i mean you look at some of these guys andre rampersad has sort of been on the trinidad radar for a really long time maybe been been called up a couple times but it didn't quite work out he wasn't able to link up with the squad he's finally able to go so there's sort of a, a few different kind of profiles of players getting called up here some guys who maybe were part of a national team setup like andrew jean baptiste fell out of it when they came to the cpl and now they've sort of played consistently enough at a level where those national teams have taken notice again right and then you also have newcomers to the CPL, the Pele Martinez, the uh, Brem Sumaro kind of players who uh, are part of those national team setups and are very young players in those setups that have come to the CPL uh, because it's not it's not just Canadians taking notice of the league, right? It's it, players all around the world that are seeing this level. And, you know, it, it's actually in large part due to, you know, the fact that you can watch these games you know, on, on one soccer right here. Um, it's, it's actually no small thing that kind of, national team federations can see these players they're sometimes seeing players born and, and raised mostly in canada that maybe have eligibility for other countries like jonathan grant or players like that or like that who maybe those national team federations see them play and they reach out to them and say hey uh, we would like you to represent that and that rep like presents opportunities for players like that and i think it, it's all sort of a result of of the standard raising and of kind of people taking more and more notice because you see these players want to come to the CPL because they, they feel that they won't fall out of their national team radar if they do that. And it, maybe they can get back into it and just prove that they can play at a professional level here. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, yeah. It demonstrates some, it demonstrates some, some growth for the, for the league, I think in a couple of ways, you know, the, the first way is that I think national teams are going to be looking at the CPL. It's a league with a few years under its belt. Now, I think they're more maybe confident in the level that, you know, these players are being provided with that they can cope with international football, that they're ready to play in, in, in those kinds of games. And then I think secondly as well, it's, it's about more players, international players from different countries looking at the CPL as a viable option, right? And, and you saw on that list, like Charlie mentioned, it's not just guys like Andrew Jean Baptiste who have been in the league for, for a couple of years now and, and proven themselves in the CPL. It's also new players coming into the league, right? Maybe from, from slightly smaller nations, seeing a good opportunity to play here, you know, seeing a professional league and in, in terms of the way it's run, the way it's broadcast, all of those things that Charlie talked about as well um, and seeing it as an attractive destination. So I, I think it's something that will probably just continue to grow. I, I also do think that like, particularly the, the kind of CONCACAF nations, places like Haiti, Trinidad, they're, they're really good kind of territory for, for CPL teams to scout. There's some, some very good players there that I think, um, you know, generally are, are pretty interested in coming up to Canada. Yeah, uh, valid point, if I can toot our own horn for a second, because when games are available, when games can be seen, which they are here on One Soccer, every single Canadian Premier League match, you can watch them. John Herdman in the past has talked about watching One Soccer and watching players and being exposed to players. In fact, even here on One Soccer with CONCACAF Nations League, you know, that's where he looks at certain players taking on different types of competition. He goes, huh. And next thing you know, you see CPL players getting call-ups because you have the ability to actually watch the games uh, right up on your, your TV or your computer screen or your phone, and that is your scouting. There you go, and you can see what's happening. John Herdman continues to be asked about the Canadian Premier League, and you know, last week, again, because of Zator and, and, and Latoury getting called up, he was asked about the CPL and its development of young Canadian players, and this is what he had to say. You know, when you're starting in the, the Canadian Premier League for a lot of players, they know that, you know, this is a starting point to hopefully the next level of football, which is, is Europe. We're starting to see it. You know, I think Victor's another great example of, of a young player. And I think that's what I'm hoping to see. I'm hoping to see that Canadian Premier League just get a bit younger so we can start springboarding you know, all the, 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 those younger players that can really uh, use that development experience. Um, you know, playing in a 
in a good league in Canada with experienced Canadian players and then springboard out to the next level. I mean, the younger those players are, the better. So it'll be good to see, you know, more players under the age of 21, you know, picking up minutes in, in the Canadian Premier League and, and therefore hopefully springboarding more out like Victor. And we know that the Canadian Premier League obviously has their rule of the amount of minutes that need to be played by under 21 players on each team, Canadian uh, U21 players. So what is your reaction to that, Charlie, and him wanting to see more of those younger players getting minutes? I, I, I think I might disagree with him a little bit there on just wanting the CPL specifically to get younger. Uh, I think that you don't want to go to a, you don't want to get to a place where you're giving minutes to under 21 players just to, to put them on the pitch. Because I think the beauty of having under 21 players come through this league, use it as a springboard move on is that when they move on from this league, they have spent years at that age playing against professionals and, and, you know, people, players who are 25, 26, 27 or older. I think that's actually a huge benefit to playing in a CPL versus playing in a, in a youth system or playing MLS next pro or something like that is that you come out of this league having played, senior professional minutes uh at at that sort of level and it it kind of makes you a little bit more ready to step into a professional game somewhere else in the world you see the players who do get the massive under 21 minutes in the league are players who largely have earned it right last year we saw sean rea one of the be one of the best players in the league osaza di rosaria was in the gold boot hunt he uh you know wubens passius even like a lot of the players that you know are helping these teams get over that under 21 minutes threshold aren't really being thrown in there just to get them over the line. Now you'll, you'll have teams that maybe get a little bit closer to, to not hitting the threshold. You have teams who do need we'll to be talking to about them one minutes. soon, Charlie, we'll be talking about one of them. Soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think in general, you do see the players that take up these minutes as under 21 players. They deserve it, right? They're not mm-hmm. just being thrown in there simply because of their age. They're being thrown in there because the coaches feel that they're ready to challenge themselves against fully grown professionals. I think that's maybe the beauty of, of why you're able to see young players come out of the CPL and move on to, to bigger and better things, whether that's Europe or MLS or anything like that. John Rea, Mo Farsi, you know, I mean, Mo Farsi yep. also under 21 player of the year. These are guys now playing in major league soccer. So you're right. If you're going to get under 21 minutes, you deserve to be getting those minutes, right? Your mm-hmm. age just happens to help you out. Um, with uh, hitting the under 21 quota minutes. All of your thoughts on that? Yeah, I don't think you have to really encourage CPL teams to to play those players. I think they're, they're all looking for, for young talent. It's, it's one of the most kind of prized assets in the league, I think, is, is young domestic players. So but like Charlie said, there's a balance. You, you don't want to get to a point where the league gets so young, uh, you're not you're not giving players the kind of experience that you benefit from, right? This, this is the point of where the CPL can be beneficial and can be potentially better for them than than MLS Next Pro or, or Reserve League is that they're, they're actually able to play against men in, in the CPL, play against experienced teams, test themselves at that level. So that the, the, there's always a balance that you want to achieve. Um, mm-hmm. I think the only thing I, I would say that, you know, we, we have to keep doing a good job of and, and have to keep expanding is just scouting in this country, right? Making sure that, you know, all of these teams have the best access to to those young players. You know, there's clubs in in certain parts of the country that, that maybe don't have the biggest local player pools. Can we make sure that they're, you know, knowledgeable about players from, from coast to coast that they could bring in and give opportunities in, in their team? So I'm sure that will continue to expand, but I, I'm, I'm quite relaxed on it, to be honest. I don't have major concerns about the CPL's promotion of, of young players. Yeah, and because it's so young, I think there is obviously still that expectation that you're producing the young talent that can then make the leap elsewhere. And I think Major League Soccer, I always look at MLS, especially on the men's side, right, of, of just like a good kind of uh, measuring stick. And MLS was very much the same way. But then you also start to realize, A, if you want to win, A, if you want to get stuff, um, stiff competition, and B, if you also want to attract fans, sometimes you need a more established player, bigger name, mm. Who comes on yeah. in so as the cpl grows i wouldn't be surprised if it starts to do what mls did and you just start to you know as the cpl grows as the money grows as you know everything kind of grows then you can you know afford to bring in maybe a bigger face a bigger name and sometimes that player is older right to attract that kind of fan base too so i think for a while we'll probably see and rightfully so a good mix in the canadian premier league